Caerphilly, Wales. A quiet coal mining community in the heart of the Welsh Valleys. In December 1976, panic gripped this little town. It was facing invasion by a barbarian horde. Frightened churchgoers gathered outside the town's castle cinema, led by a local pastor. We do protest that this thing has come to Caerphilly. Terrible, I think it is. I think it's disgusting. It's, well, it's lowering the standard of our people in Caerphilly. But what was it that had the good people of Caerphilly in such a tizzy? The cult is called punk, the music punk rock. Raw, outrageous and crude. And in the vanguard, the Sex Pistols. Punk rock has become almost a battle cry in British society. For many people, it's a bigger threat to our way of life than Russian communism or hyperinflation. We will be hearing from city councillors in London, in Glasgow, and Newcastle, whose councils have banned punk rock concerts. For these guardians of public morality, punk was a frontal assault on British reserve and common decency. But despite the outcry, the Pistols' anarchy tour was on its way to Caerphilly. That night, the old Britain came face to face with the new. Over there were the God-fearing, polite, well-mannered, deferential. And standing right here was the new generation, who reveled in being confrontational, insulting, provocative. Each side was equally bewildered by the other. How do you feel about the crowd opposite? Oh, they're entitled to do what they want. The oh. thing is, they're outside, freezing. We're in it real, right? I've got a flyer that was handed out by the churchgoers outside the concert hall. And they describe punk rock as a rampant evil that's the direct result of our national rejection of God. But there is hope, they say, for punks who turn from their wicked ways and embrace redemption. The vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Perhaps God really was on the protesters' side. Out of 630 tickets, only 60 were sold. Tonight, some of the original troublemakers are gathering again in Caerphilly to celebrate their modest part in the punk story. A Sex Pistols tribute band is headlining at the town's workman's hall. First punk in with the bit. He was first over second. What was once so shocking has become part of local legend. A moment not for fear, but nostalgia. Post-war Britain had seen teddy boys, mods, rockers and skinheads come and go. But there was something different about punk that made it all the more shocking. It wasn't just about the gob and the noise. With their outrageous clothes and their provocative lyrics, punks were assaulting Britain's most cherished cultural icons. 30 years on, Many people still revered the legacy of our finest hour. Programs for tomorrow evening. Dad's army is on parade at 6.50. The memory of the war hung heavy in our culture. From the TV schedules... I would not mind having you shot. Thank you, sir. ..to the games we played. For those who haven't lived through the war, and the austerity of its aftermath. All of this looking backwards could seem intensely stifling. As one of the Sex Pistols teenage fans put it, she hated everybody always harking on about Hitler. 
Teenagers sporting swastikas, songs of Nazi death camps. Could there be anything more likely to upset a generation shaped by the war? That just remains for me to wish you a very good night. Good night. There certainly could. For the Pistols had another target, the nation's cherished figurehead. God save the Queen, the fascist regime. God save the Queen, she ain't no human being. There is no future in England's dreaming. It's hard to think of any lyrics that would be more likely to inflame the great majority of public opinion. I thought one of mine was in there, I'd go in there and drag them out. What did you think of the sex pistol? Brilliant. The one who went to Rod Stewart, but I wouldn't let him go to see this rubbish.